Hello and welcome to another episode of Tuesday Tips. I'm Pam Keselowskis and today we're going to be talking about the MOR process. Uh, this is especially important for those of you who are new to this and for those of you who have some experience with MORs, some things have changed a little bit. Uh, first of all, let me wish you a happy Hotma extension. If you have not had a chance to yet, please check out Vicky's Tuesday tip on the Hotma extension and what it means. And let's talk a little bit about the MOR process. So MORs, Management and Occupancy Reviews, are the reviews that Navigate will come out and do at your property to ensure compliance with HUD guidelines. So we're going to look at HUD eligibility. We're going to ensure that the properties are well maintained, ensure that any deficiencies from either prior management reviews or your INSPIRE or REACT inspections were taken care of, and do a little monitoring of resident satisfaction. The frequency of these reviews is going to vary depending on the score of your last management review. So just like with the REACT or INSPIRE inspections, how you score can have an impact on the frequency. There is a general schedule that HUD has. They have so many a year that they're going to want done. They look at your last management review and inspection scores. If you have a lot of resident concerns that can kind of trigger them to have an MOR to make sure that things are being taken care of. We all know that residents can have concerns for a number of reasons, but if there are a lot of them, that may prompt HUD to want to take a look at the property. Troubled status, if there are major issues with the property, HUD may want a management review to take a look at things more in depth. And then HUD has other criteria which can affect the schedule of the management reviews. The first step when we're going to do a management review is to send you a notification. You're going to receive reasonable notice for the review. Bear in mind that HUD will publish their schedule fairly close to a month in which reviews are going to happen. So you may not get more than a month's notice or a few weeks notice of a review, but Navigate will give you as much notice as we are able to, depending on when HUD lets us know that they'd like your property review. The notification will be sent to the email address on file for the owner and or management, and it's important to keep those contacts updated because delay in notifying you due to failure to update those contacts, let's say Navigate had an incorrect email address and it took a little while for that to bounce back to us and get another notification out, that delay is not a reason to reschedule a management review. So you want to make sure those contacts are updated so that you get as much notice as possible. Once you get your notification, you're going to respond. So we're going to ask you to confirm the date and the time with us. We do have some flexibility, but it's very limited. So if, say, that Tuesday doesn't work, we may be able to move it to that Thursday, depending on our schedule. But we don't have a lot of ability to move your management review. You're going to need to notify your residents that you have a management review coming. It's a simple notification that you need to do. There's no required format, but you do need to let them know that Navigate is coming, the date and time, and that if they wish to speak to the representative from Navigate, they can let you know that so that we can make sure to get in contact with them. And then you may have other procedures within your own management company for how you respond to the notification of MOR. For instance, there may be your compliance person or other staff within your company that you need to notify once you get that notice. This is the Navigate contact flyer. So we will be giving you this either at the time of the review or often before we come. We ask that you post this in a location that residents are easily able to see it. Some people will post near the mailboxes, some sites have a community bulletin board, and some will post near the laundry, somewhere that your residents can see it. The link is down below there, but the easiest way to find it is to go to the Navigate website and you can find it in the resource center. 
Another thing to keep in mind about that contact notice is we do have it in English, Spanish, and other languages. If for any reason you need it in a language that we don't have there, let us know and we'll do our best to provide it for you. So the first step to the review is called a desk review. The notification email that you receive is going to include a list of documents, often referred to as the Addendum C, that we're going to need to look at. You'll also get a link to our portal, and what you're going to do is take those documents and upload the documents to the portal that we have. So if you go to our website, you will have the link in the email, but where you find this is if you go to the Navigate website, all the way on the right in the top menu, you'll see a customer portal, and that's where you'll find the ability to upload documents. So what you're going to be uploading are pretty much all of the Addendum C documents, things like, um, you know, wait lists, rejection letters, staff lists, application packets, lease and house rules, uh, your marketing. So you're going to upload the plan and the recent advertising and a copy of notice to residents. One of the things to note about the wait list is you do not want any personally identifiable information in there typically, um, but you can upload the wait list to the portal because it is secure. Don't upload anything or email anything that has any sort of personally identifiable information, birth dates, social security numbers, anything like that. You do not want to be emailing to us. The portal is secure, which is why you can upload that wait list, but you want to be very careful about anything that has secure information. Be aware that due to the limits of the Navigate portal and oftentimes your own limits, it may take multiple submissions to get all of the documents in there. You're limited on the portal to 10 documents at a time, so it may take multiple submissions to get everything there. The best thing about the portal is the quicker you can send that information and the more you are able to upload into that portal means the less we have to be at the site to look at. So you want to take advantage of that portal. Please try and upload things at least a week or two in advance so that your reviewer has time to take a look at everything. But it does make that process more efficient and a little faster at the site. One of the, the questions we often have is about tenant selection plans and EIV and how much you can upload. HUD requires that your existing tenant selection plan and EIV policy be available at the site for review. So you can give those to us the day of review. We're also going to want to see your HOTMA revised tenant selection plan and EIV policy. So we're going to look at the current and the HOTMA revision. Remember that both of those have to be available to the public, although the method of making it available varies by the owner agent. Some post it, some make it available on request. You just need to make sure that it's available as per your policy. One of the things that is a little different from previous MORs is what we look at in your tenant files. All certifications from the last review to now are potentially subject to review. So that means where if you didn't have a review for the last three years, we're going to look at all certifications for the files that we pull for those three years. Everything between the last MOR to now. The list of which files we'll be reviewing are going to be provided to you when your reviewer arrives. Generally, we're going to look at at least one move in, at least one move out, a selection of annuals and interims, and at least one rejection file, unless there are none. So the rejections, we're looking at rejections in the last 12 months. So if you've had rejections in the last 12 months, we're going to look at at least one of those. If you've had none, we're just going to ask you to document for us that there have been none. So on review day, when we arrive, we're going to look at your tenant files. We're going to look at any documents that have not been submitted through the portal, your EIV master file, meaning all of your reports, and your user and coordinator forms. 
one of the things that's critical that you have in that EIV binder is the owner authorization letter for your coordinator. That doesn't have a set form, although HUD has a sample, but it's the letter from the owner that allows the coordinator to act as the coordinator for that property. And that needs to be in file for every coordinator that you have on that site. We're going to go through the HUD 9834 interview with you. That's that long questionnaire that we go through. We're going to ask you about management practices, maintenance, your staffing. All of that is going to be part of that 9834 interview form. We'll be looking at vacant units that you have. And we're going to confirm mitigation of your REAC or INSPIRE findings. So we're going to walk around and take pictures, actually, to document that those are completed. Some of the other things that we look at include your policies and procedures. Again, we're looking at your EIV policy and procedure. We may look at your work order procedures, inspection procedures, things like that, if you have them. We're going to look for some compliance with state laws. Depending on which state you're in, you may have different lease addendums that have to be signed or inspection forms that have to be used. Uh, for instance, Connecticut State has a sprinkler notice that has to be given to properties that are required to have sprinklers. So if your state has anything that is required to be signed as part of that process, your reviewer may be asking to see those things as well. And we're going to look at some signage. Do you have your fair housing signage up? Do you have the Navigate Contact Flyer up? So it's important to make sure that you have your signage, the fair housing logo, and anything else that's required posted where it can easily be seen. When it comes to HOTMA, there are very few findings right now. So these are the things that are going to be HOTMA findings. Failure to update your tenant selection plan or EIV policy at all for HOTMA is a finding. If there are individual issues with the update, those will be noted as observations for right now. If your documents are not available for public review, again, that method varies, but if you do not make those things available for public review, that can be a finding. Again, any errors or omissions in the revisions that you've done, those will be noted, but they'll be observations, not findings. So it'll give you a chance to look at where those errors are and to fix them before HOTMA goes into effect. Other HOTMA findings, and again, this slide hasn't quite been updated because this just happened, but other HOTMA findings will not be effective until HOTMA is fully implemented, which right now is July 1st of 2025, or who knows, it may change again, but right now it's July 1st. So once you have survived your MOR and we have left and we've had a chance to look at the wonderful property you have and how well you're doing, what happens then? Well, at the end of the MOR, we're going to do an exit interview with you. That's an opportunity for you to locate any documents that we may not have seen, but may be in the file. For instance, if we didn't see verification of a checking account and it was just hidden behind something else, that gives you an opportunity to go through the file and say, nope, it's here, so that we're not giving you a finding for something we don't need to give you a finding for. You'll also have an opportunity to ask questions. You are welcome to ask your reviewer about why something is a finding or what HUD is looking for in a particular case. So take advantage of that opportunity to locate items if you can, review the files, review the findings, and ask questions. We may follow up by email if there's anything that we need after we've left your property. And unfortunately, you can wait up to 30 days for our written response of, a find of the uh, findings that you have. So after the MOR, we will go back and do what we need to do. And then we'll issue you a full report with the findings within 30 days. One of the biggest things to remember about the management reviews is this is not an ambush. It's not meant to be a gotcha. We're required by HUD to ensure that properties are complying with the rules. 
but a review is also your chance to shine. And we love to be able to tell HUD what a great job you're doing at your properties. Some of the things you want to show off for us are anything above your normal obligations that you are doing for your residents. Most of you do all sorts of different things to make those communities a warm and welcoming place to live for your residents. Resident service coordinators are doing all sorts of wonderful work to bring in community resources. Some of you have social programs. Some of you provide, say, um, all sorts of food programs at the site where you bring in community resources to help your residents. Those are things we want to see at the MOR. So make sure you're telling us about that. You can give us copies of event schedules. You can give us copies of newsletters, a calendar. Let us know what's going on at your property beyond the nuts and bolts that HUD requires. So that's all there is today for management review process. If you have any ideas for Tuesday tips, please let us know. If you have questions, please feel free to reach out to me or to Vicki Bell, our other trainer, and have a great day. We'll see you on the next Tuesday tips. Thank <music> you.